We're here more than anything to celebrate Dr. Nutting tonight. And that's something. that I've wanted to be able to do for a very long time, and this seemed like the perfect opportunity. Um, one of the things when, when I started YES was I wanted a scientific advisory board. And um, so I was looking for people to be on it, and I sent out an email, and one of those emails went to Charlie Nutty, and he sent me back an email that changed both of our lives, and it said three simple words, happy to help, CN. And I bet you he had no idea when he wrote those three simple words, <laughs> how much he would be helping over the next five years. He has answered emails in the middle of the night. He's answered phone calls. He's done, done things that have inspired and encouraged and have a lot of you sitting in this very room. Um, that means a lot. One of the things that I hear about him so often is that you don't just get a treatment from him. You know that he cares from the minute you walk in the door. And that's not just because of him, that's because of his staff and the people he's chosen to be around. And that's a, that says a lot. You get the red carpet rolled out. And one patient actually said that she felt like the, um, the Queen of England and that he was delivering the crown jewels. <laughs> I'm gonna tell one more story and then we'll go on from there. Several years ago, I told my story at a different medical conference in a different state. And as I was looking around the room, there was a lady sitting in the very front row. She's absolutely gorgeous. And she was sobbing uncontrollably. I said, well, my story's happy. Why are you crying? And she said, I have metastatic breast cancer and I have a five-year-old and I have a three-year-old. And I walked my first one into kindergarten and I'm scared I won't be able to do that with my second one. She said, your story is the first story that I've ever heard that might let me walk my son into kindergarten. And so we talked about different treatment options and it ended up that she um, had sur spheres, she had chemoembolization, she had radiofrequency ablation. But I think the story that makes her so profound is that when she went in for her mapping and her treatment, um, her anatomy wasn't exactly correct. And so the doctor said that he couldn't perform the procedure and she called me from the recovery room crying. I was on a mountaintop in Arkansas with Ronnie and the girls on vacation and I answered the phone. What's even better than that is that Dr. Nutting was on, the way out his, on his way out the door to Cambodia and he took the time to call her back. And three weeks later, she had that treatment. And not only did she walk her son into kindergarten, she walked him into first grade. And so sometimes even when you can't have a cure, you bring us celebrations, moments, memories, and milestones that you probably don't even think about or realize that you're giving us. And so that's my thank you, but I'm not the only one that wants to say thank you tonight. Okay, I'm a little ADD and quite can't get a speech down, but I've always believed that actions speak louder than words, and my words uh, seem to lack the power and emotion I wish to invoke in what I'm about to say to you. I speak from my heart, my soul, and because of the hope I've seen because of this man, Dr. Nutting, we're seeing in front of. Um, in fact, <laughs> um, sorry. <laughs> Infectious and doctors are two words often uh, not want to be heard in the same sentence. So with all due respect, you're the most infectious doctor of hope, inspiration, and love I've seen in the world. <laughs> And not even, and for my dream to come true of a great world, to see even a man half the man of you, to be the rest of them as an example, would be a perfect man to see, to make this world a great pray, uh, place. Sorry. Uh, <clears throat> well, <clears throat> I'm Roy Ireland from South Dakota, my wife Barbie, and she got diagnosed with breast cancer about 20 years ago, I guess, and. And about nine years after that, it went to her liver, and we, she decided she wanted to go down to Aiding Clinic in Arizona, which I was not, uh, I, I was supportive, but not uh, real. <laughs> but anyway, out of that came our chance to meet Dr. Nutting, and, and I believe that's the reason Barbie's alive today, so thank you. <laughs> Yes, I 
I was able to meet Dr. Nutting, like Roy said, about nine years ago. Actually, I've had cancer about 20 years, and I was cancer-free for nine years and forgot that. And this last nine years, I do not forget it, and it's because I'm still here, able to see my family and, and all the fun things that I enjoy in life. And I owe that to Dr. Nutting. Um, I was in a naturopathic clinic taking um, supplements and vitamin C, and it was through that doctor that he referred me to Dr. Nutting for the Sears fear. After I had those two treatments, it was, my markers went down and I have been basically still on top of this cancer the last 10 years, but, but I owe that to Dr. Nutting. Thank you so much. You're gonna look at me and you're going, she's one of my patients. And no, I am not. <laughs> but, I, but I may be soon. But I do know this fact that you have made such a huge difference in so many people's lives in this room. And although I don't know you personally, I'm overwhelmed by what you have done. So thank you. And I'm not one of your patients either. <laughs> I'm here in support of my friend Linda, but I also happen to be the Associate Director of the Col Colorado Ovarian Cancer Alliance. And on Monday, I was at Nikki's Circle, which is our support group, a phenomenal group of women. And just by coincidence, Dr. Nutting, your name came up. And uh, they extolled your virtues. Uh, there are many women there who I know you've enriched and extended their lives. And I want to thank you on behalf of the entire ovarian cancer community. Thank you so much for your work. Dr. Nutting, you gave our son-in-law almost four years more than he thought he would have. You are so special to our whole family. And one thing that makes you so unique is that every single person here feels like you are the most, they are the most special person to you. You are an amazing doctor, a doctor unlike anybody I've ever, ever met. Um, you're gifted and compassionate and talented, and you've just made such a big difference to our whole family, and we will always be indebted to you. Thank you very much. I couldn't get all that out without crying, but I just want to echo it totally. Hi. Um, well, I know that I was really shocked every time my mom was excited to go to the doctor cause, because she always left with a smile on her face and came back, whether it was with a smile or not, she was still happy. And I'm glad you made her look forward to something that was really hard to deal with. And I just want to say thank you for making her last as long as she could. Dr. Nutting, I don't know how to say thank you to somebody for giving me back my life, but... Ten years ago, I had been diagnosed with the carcinoid and liver metastases, and every doctor told me to go home and die. And my third oncologist, when he told me that, and I went back and said no, he was in Phoenix, and he said, well, there's this new procedure that I have never really referred anyone, and that's how I heard about you. And it's been nine years, and here I am, and how do I thank you for giving me back my life? Thank you. I also am not one of your patients, but I have heard many things, wonderful things about you, and I've seen you in person interacting with your patients, but not just thank you, thanking you. I'd like to thank Mrs. Nutting, Chase and Cole, thank y'all for sharing your husband and your dad with all these people in this room and many, many more. There's people in here that wouldn't be here today if it weren't for your daddy. Thank you. Hi, I would just like to say thank you so much for supporting Suzanne's group. I am also not a patient but Suzanne was a godsend to me, and she was my lifeline now for eight years. And I was in Chicago, and I did hear you speak when we were at the Palmer House. And thank you for everything you have done for everyone here.
First of all, I'd like to thank Erica Hansen-Brown for contacting me to invite me to this event, and it's an honor to also meet Suzanne Lindley. The last time I saw Dr. Nutting, he was in his scrubs, and he came into the room, and what had happened to me is that my original port had gotten infected after a year and a half. I'm a stage four colorectal cancer survivor. I'm also an ostomate. And Dr. Nutting came in, gave me a talk, and encouraged me and put in a nice new port that fits so well. And I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart too, Dr. Nutting. It's an honor. Dr. Nutting, uh, I've seen you in many different cities, <laughs> and you're always with a smile and a hug. I'm, I'm one of Suzanne's groupies. Um, I'm a nine-year colon cancer, stage 3C survivor, and knowing that you're in the world and the work that you do makes me breathe a lot easier. And thank you so much. Well, I'm a, a stage 4 breast cancer survivor um, from California, and I think Dr. Nutting doesn't know that how I got to him was, well, partly I got to him because of Suzanne, who raved like crazy about him, and also partly because of Dr. Kennedy, who also suggested <laughs> that I might want to come see him. But in addition to that, I went in the Bay Area to interventional radiologists in San Francisco at UCSF, and then to one in, at Stanford, and the guy at Stanford said to me, you know, if you're gonna do it in the Bay Area, Sir Spheres, you should do it here because we have more experience than UCSF does. But if you really want the very best, go wherever, whoever has the most experience, not only with Sir Spheres, but with Sir Spheres, I mean with liver tumors from breast cancer specifically. And then they said, how about Dr. Nutting? So between Suzanne and Stanford, I ended up in your domain. I also, the last time I saw you was in, you were in scrubs. And um, I'm so profoundly grateful for my response to Sir Spheres and whatever magic you had to do with that because, you know, I went from lots and lots of liver tumors to just about none, I mean, one. So I'm pretty thrilled. Thank you. I, too, am not one of your patients, but uh, the first time I heard your name was from my sister, and you represented a great amount of hope to her. Um, unfortunately, she didn't have the time to pursue but um, through Suzanne and through people like you, um, you've touched a lot of people. <laughs> well, I'm a longtime survivor. I've had uh, liver cancer for 31 years. And Dr. Nutting has done the Y90, the two chemo embolizations, and a microwave on me. The last one was about six weeks ago. I'm here because of Dan. Thank you, Dr. Nutting. I'm behind the post. <laughs> I'm Brian McLeod. Um, I've, I've been almost the patient of yours several times. <laughs> Thank goodness. <laughs> um, one thing I have to say about Dr. Nutting is that he's always been willing to look at my scans, discuss them with me. There's always been a little oddities with some of my scans and, and would explain them on layman's terms with me and it's always been a treat knowing that I've got you in my back pocket if I need you when one of these scans comes out the wrong way. So I want to thank you very much and I even brought a new scan for you. <laughs> I'd like to thank you first of all for the natural curly hair I have now that I've never had in my whole life. Um, I need to thank Suzanne and Cure Magazine 
um, and reading about you and your work, but thinking, I'll be one of those patients that never gets there. You know, that won't be for me. That, that's for those people who manage to have the right connections. And I read that article. I had a cancer appointment. I found out that I was growing liver tumors again. Um, I called Suzanne, crying hysterically, very upset, didn't know what to do um, because I was, there, there was nothing left. And I'm sure it was within two weeks. I was up here for my first treatment with Sears spheres and things have, I just had the third one in February and um, I can honestly say that even though um, I'm now old enough, I think probably to be about your grandmother, um, I feel better than I have felt in so many years that it's, it's allowed me to be here and with this wonderful group of people. And I found that to be able to connect with the surgical team as you do before each procedure is so calming and so focusing and I have appreciated that faith so much. But I think most of all, y you are an accessible doctor and there's not a lot of them that do what you do who are as accessible to people like me. And I am extremely grateful for that. And I, you know, three times around, we're hoping it's charm. Hello, my name's Russ Howard from Kansas City, Missouri. I'm here on behalf of my late wife, Tamara Howard. She joined the Angels in Heaven in October of 2008 at the age of 48. During our journey, we had the privilege to meet Suzanne Lindley of the Yes Organization in Canton, Texas. What a lady. What an impact she had on our family. I promised my wife as she lay dying that I would do what was most important to her. That was to find a way to honor Suzanne for changing our lives forever. Through Suzanne, we gained hope when we were hopeless. On Tamara's webpage and email friends list, we didn't call her Suzanne. We referred to her as Tamara's Angel. After Tamara's passing, the Angel of Hope Award was born because the hope that Suzanne gave us when we had none was immeasurable. What brings me here today is something even bigger. During Tamara's illness, we fought our insurance company to pay for her treatment for eight months prior to her death. Because she had blue cal uh, cholangiocarcinoma, Blue Cross Blue Shield decided that since it was rare, they didn't have to pay. Finally, the only treatment left was to try Cirrospheres. For seven months, they denied us um, treatment. We were ultimately sent home to die. The emotional cost of not getting this treatment was tough on Tamara, obviously. It was difficult for me as well, as her husband and her protector, I felt that I had failed. On Sunday morning in August 2008, I sent a CD scan of Tamara's abdomen to a physician at Sky Ridge Medical Center in Colorado by next day air envelope. I had never spoken to this gentleman before, nor had I sent him her medical records. In that envelope, I wrote, four short lines. I'm broke. My insurance company won't pay. I know you probably can't save her, but can you give us time? The doctor received that next day air envelope at noon on Monday. At 3 p.m. that same day, my phone rang, and it was this physician at Sky Ridge Medical Center. He said, I will help you. A flurry of activity took part on that day. Tuesday morning, my phone rang and his nurse said, the doctor has rearranged his schedule. Can you be here tomorrow? He will operate at 7 a.m. Thursday morning. What a life-changing 72 hours that was. We bought one-way tickets and taking nothing for granted. We did not assume that both of us would return. Thursday morning rolled around at 7 a.m. and we were there. In walked this physician to whom I'd only do twice. At 7.30, Tamara went to surgery for serous fears, the only weapon in the arsenal of medical treatment left to try. This doctor made it happen. The peace that this gentleman brought to Tamara and I, money cannot buy. She knew that no stone had been left unturned in her fight for life. 
As a man, her husband, and her rock, the peace he brought to me is what sustains me today. Tamara left us seven weeks later. The gift of hope and peace that this man has given so many around the country is amazing. It is my honor and Tamara's memory on behalf of our children, Russ Jr. and Tiffany Joe, on behalf of Suzanne Lindley and the Yes Organization, I am pleased to present the third annual Angel of Hope Award to Dr. Charles Nutty. It is so much easier for me to give a medical talk to 2,000 doctors, <clears throat> excuse me, than, than speak from my heart to uh, friends and patients and uh, to those who have passed on. Um, I'd like to thank my team. Um, uh, they, they, I could not do this alone. We have uh, lots of people behind the scenes and uh, whenever I get a phone call, they say it's your wife. And I'm never sure if it's Angie or if it's Jean, my work wife, um, to tell me about another patient. Um, Suzanne, uh, thank you so much. You, uh, you've become such a friend over the years, and I can't thank you enough for this, this whole gathering and everything that you do. Um, industry, industry's been very supportive, and, uh, and I thank them and, and have a very good working relationship with them. Uh, don't do that. <laughs> um, I, I, uh, I take my faith very seriously, and um, it's one of the things that keeps me going. And um, uh, I'd like to say thank you to the patients who are here who have done well. I'd also like to say thank you to the patients that have passed on, and, um, and I hold very fondly in my heart. Um, thank you, everybody, for showing up tonight. and. Um, uh, God bless you.